Hey, let's paint Splintered Fang for Warcry. Welcome back to Mini Junkie, everyone. My name is Jarrett. So I was going to call this video a cornucopia of audiovisual ness and yet it's more like a dog's breakfast. But this is the first video on the Mini Junkie channel that is edited entirely on my iPad using LumaFusion. And I want to thank Mick from Closet Geek. You know, I think I'll link his channel below uh, for putting me onto this uh, technique for editing videos because it's way faster and easier, quite frankly, than using my computer. But it comes with some growing pains, which involves a lot of trial and error on the audio and the and the transitions and things like that. So there's probably going to be a healthy dose of jank in this video. By the way, I told you guys I was going to try to uh, do like in real time my commentary when I'm painting and I about half of this video is done that way, but I'm finding that it's just not working for me right now uh, with regards to how I produce the videos. So for now, about halfway through the video, I switch back to voiceover narration. I'll probably be sticking to that for a while. I painted the Splinter Fang for gameplay mostly, so there's definitely some, some mistakes made. Uh, that's pretty typical of the channel actually. And the last thing I'll say is I'm kind of bummed because I, this is represents painting the last of the new war bands for Warcry. I've done the Unmade and the Corvus Cabal already. You've probably seen those videos. That means I need to find something else to paint. And maybe I'll paint more war bands for like the Age of Sigmar style war bands. They sell those card packs. I'm not sure. Let me know below what you think I should start painting next. If you're new here, consider subscribing if you're interested in the hobby of painting miniatures. I paint miniatures for war games and board games and even just display and RPGs. And I'm all about getting a great result with minimal effort because I'm lazy and I'm old and I just like to get things done faster these days. All right, let's paint the Splintered Fang. And here's a look at the Splintered Fang we are going to be painting in today's video. All right, guys, a couple things I'll explain before I get started. Um, one is that I'm going to paint the armor of these guys with scale 75, um, like the sort of scale mail, with, eh, scale color, with emerald emerald alchemy, which is a nice sort of light uh, green. It looks bluish on the video, I think, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to do that and because it's going to be a bit of a lighter color. To have contrast, I'm going to do darker leather. Or, or cloth, wherever there is cloth, and I'm gonna do um, a darker skin tone. I don't tend to vary the skin tones across the warbands as you've seen in my previous two, but I'm gonna do a darker um, tone, and I'm gonna sort of experiment to figure out how to do that, because uh, I'm not sure. Uh, another thing is I have one guy who, I'm not sure, you can probably tell, I actually cut most of his elbow off when I was assembling. I don't know why I did that. I thought it was sprue. So I had to rebuild that with Vallejo plastic putty and a bit of super glue. And I think it mostly worked. I think it'll be, it won't look perfect, but it'll, it should blend in. And yeah, the rest is gonna be same, same kind of bases. I'm not gonna work super hard on these snakes. I'll probably do them pretty, pretty straightforward. And in fact, I don't know if I'll even film that. It's not that interesting. But yeah, let's, uh, we'll start out by uh, applying the Scale 75 Metallic. Before I get started, I forgot uh, this is what I primed with through my airbrush. Uh, the bases have been covered in uh, Vallejo Dark Earth Texture Paste, and so then when I prime, that gets light colored, and then that's how I can use contrast paint to do the bases very quickly. All right, so we're going to start out with Emerald Alchemy. I've been told, you know, I asked on the Evier Metal Facebook group, how people thin these and I said that water doesn't work well for me and they said they just use water most that's what most of the answers were so I don't know if I'm just doing it wrong or what uh, I have not had great success using just water actually I think I'll try using water plus I got my toothbrush or <laughs> again I have my paintbrush in my mouth I'm gonna just try not to use too much We'll see how that works. So yeah, this is a pretty light green, but we're gonna give that a shot and see how it looks. So I think I might have thinned it a little bit too much. 
Just shaking it up a bit. Um, I'm gonna put a little more in there to have less dilution. Oh, sorry, you can't actually see what I did there. I put two drops. Just thicken it up a little bit. So I actually want it to cover. I'm not super excited about two thin coats with metallics. I just want it to cover nicely in the first first coat. Let's see how that worked. Yeah, I think that's better. Once again, I'm not airbrushing as much as I normally would uh, with this warband because of how much the various sections and colors are, are kind of close together that airbrushing, while sometimes effective with these with this scale, uh, I just don't think I would save a ton of time this, in, this, in this situation. And by the way, I know Scale 75 isn't exactly easy to find at your local store. Um, you may have to order it online if you decide to pursue this route. I mean, you can also just paint the uh, armor with a regular metallic color and maybe do a glaze of um, green with whatever green you choose. But uh, and I did a poll at one point where people who watch my channel suggested they would like to see me use whatever paints I have, even if they're not necessarily easy to get. So here you go, this is scale 75. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use Shayish Purple, which is their the darker purple contrast paint for a fair bit of the cloth because purple and green are actually a pretty nice combo. Uh, they, they contrast nicely. Um, so let's just see. I mean, it won't look good till it dries, but we'll give this a shot. Either that or it's gonna be a disaster, but let's just see how it goes. I think that's gonna end up looking good. Um, I'm also going to use some sort of contrast paint on this scale mail or some kind of green wash. I think contrast paint with Lamian Medium is a good choice. Problem is I don't have any green contrast paint. I have the Achillean green that I used for the crows, the Corvus Cabal, but I don't think that's quite the green I want for these guys because this looks really nice, but it also is a little too flat and I need to pull out the detail between each scale. So anyway, so yeah, purple on a lot of the cloth. And actually even the inside of this cloth, which I'm pretty sure is going to be hard to do and look blotchy, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. It's just hard to access with the brush. I may do a bit more, but you know, to these, but as a starting point, I'm using uh, Vallejo Gaming Green for the Mohawks. And here's uh, what they look like. I did a couple test ones first just to see, you know, it's kind of contrast painty kind of effect. Very quick and very easy and looks good. But I may, depending on how things are going, I may decide to add a little bit more interest to these um, Mohawks by adding stripes or, or, you know, something like that. Kind of like the official ones have. But yeah, this is just like contrast paint, very, very, very easy to do. When you have a texture like this, you're just brushing it on straight out of the bottle and run across the hairs because, well, except for down by the head where you're trying to actually just sort of paint them, but by running down and across, you cause more of the ink to go in between each of the strands to create that shading. For the net and the whips, I'm just gonna use uh, contrast paint black Templar straight out of the bottle, no thinning. Just gonna brush it right on. Not feeling too ambitious, especially about the with the net. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Just want it to look like a dark net. Just like that on the net. And then I've got two guys, I think, with, no, well, maybe just one. One guy with a whip. I'm just gonna run it right down the whip. The uh, little scorpions 
tail stinger thing on the end, we'll probably be done with the metal. So some of you who are more observant may have noticed that I, whoa, darn it. I just grabbed the contrast paint that's not dry yet. Looks like I missed it. That's not meant to be cloth on their, well, this is a woman on her chest piece. There's two or three that I painted incorrectly. Uh, I guess they're the ones on the 30, I don't know, 32 millimeter bases, I guess. Uh, it's supposed to be metal. So the good news is metal covers a dark color nicely. So, well, honestly, we're going to paint it over whatever, even the white. So I'm using Vallejo metallic metal paint steel. <laughs> just like I, God, I'm just throwing this stuff all over the place. Uh, like I used on the Unmade. Just shake it up yeah, right out of the bottle. Let's see. What I do, of course, like I said, I'm looking at the box and I was like, um, where is it? Yeah, that's how I knew it was supposed to be metal. And same for this person. And I'm just going to go right back over the purple that I did before. It's nice and dry at this point. You want to make sure, well, <laughs> First of all, you want to make sure you're not painting over purple because you don't make this mistake. But if you are, wait till it's dry. These Vallejo metallics are thinned for airbrushing, but as a consequence, they also hand brush very well. I'm also going to use this color on any of the armor that's not um, the, you know, the green scale mail. So for example, she's wearing greaves here. I'll use the use this uh, color for that. I'm going for a fairly dark armor. I think it's kind of a good match for the way the official ones are done. And I think we're also going to be doing some trim in a brighter color, like a gold. And I'll, I'll show you what I use for that when the time comes. I'm using Saigor Brown for all the straps and belts on each one of the members of the warband. Now my plan is to do some sort of like poisony effects on the weapons and I want a light metal base for that. So this is chain mail. It's like runefang steel. I say that and I use this in a lot of my videos so you probably heard that before. I'm only really using this for now. I'll, I mean I guess I'll be highlighting the armor pretty soon but for now I'm just using this on the weapons. So all the blades. Just one nice smooth coat working quickly so as to not get brush strokes and then later we're gonna I'm gonna actually use the airbrush to do some some cool poison effects on these I mean really simple ones so don't get too excited like this part to be kind of a light green um, so if I use a contrast that's gonna be a darker green so I'm gonna use Beale Tan Green Shade and so that's going to because it's going right over white that should just create like a light green effect. I'm kind of crossing my fingers as I say that. Yeah, see? <laughs> see, I was right. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, Beal Tan Green on the snake belly. So I did go out and buy a couple of new contrast paints to add to my collection. Orc, Flesh Green, and Dark Angels Green. So now I have green contrast paint. and. Um, I'm just going to use, I think, the Dark Angel Green right out of the pot. I'm going to use that to paint the two large snakes on the Snake Wrangler, which is not what this person is called. And right away after applying it, I knew it was it was definitely the right stuff to use. And yes, I'm speaking in the past tense because the audio was screwed up on this clip and I'm recording it after the fact. But yeah, just brushed it on um, and just being careful to avoid the light green belly that we did earlier. And I found that, yeah, this is a nice contrast between the two surfaces of the snake and the dark green looks good um, on, this, on the snake. So that's what I used. So I actually went back to one of my past videos. It was the one where I painted the Achillean King, I think, Volop. Chewis, I forget his name, Volupternus, um, and looked at how did I wash 
the scale 75 paint and retain some luster um, so I'm using Beale Tan Green and Lamian Medium 5050 because that's kind of what I used on him. So whether it be through recording videos of what you're doing, which maybe that's unlikely, but um, keeping a recipe or, or a record of how you paint certain things can be handy later on down the road when it comes time to do something similar. So like I said, I'm going to apply now how am I going to get the 50-50 part of this done right? Let's see. So here's what I'm mixing. I'm going to try to eyeball it, eyeball it basically. Let's mix it like that. And yeah, the idea is going to be to apply this mix to all of the light colored scale mail we've done so far. Again, I'm going to test it in an area that's a little bit harder to see on this person. Oh yeah, I like it right away, I can tell. It's that fast. As always, watch for pooling and wick that up with your brush if you see any. Don't let it get, uh, you know, don't let it pool heavily. There, so I'm going to go through and do that on all the scale mail. This young lady's boots, I decided to just do with Black Templar. She's actually the only one who's up wearing boots, as far as I could tell, the rest seem to be barefoot. So I mentioned I was gonna do something a little different with the weapons as far as this idea of them being tainted with um, poison. I'm gonna try using Ghost Tint Yellow and Ghost Tint Green. Both are Badger Minotaur paints. And I'm gonna do first the yellow. I'm just gonna lightly airbrush it onto their weapons. I'm doing this now because any overspray is, is, you know, I'm gonna wanna correct that as I'm painting things like the flesh or anywhere else that this is gonna go. So the idea is to minimize how many places I'm gonna get this yellow or green ink. Um, you know, I don't wanna get it on stuff after I painted it that, that isn't supposed to show it. Another great, another great explanation. Let's see here. Hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna try to, this is my, this is my airbrush booth here. You gotta spray really pretty lightly with this stuff or it can quickly spider web or, you know, create li you know liquidity and pooling and start running on your surface, which you don't want. The yellow here is just to create a little tonal variation. It's really the green that's gonna be the, the bulk of this like poisonous vibe. But I think I'm already happy with how this is gonna look. I know it looks a little gold right now, but you'll see. See, this is what I mean. You can see how he got some yellow on his knee and a bit of, oh, oops. A bit of yellow on his knee and on his foot where I don't want it, so I'm gonna, of course, be painting over that with white, but that's why I'm doing the spray now. All right, here's the green. You can sort of see how it's just, a, it's kind of a nice, subtle, faded green, not just this blobby, super bright green that would look, look kind of artificial. And what I'm gonna do is Sort of fade it up to a darker green towards the tip. I have to, I have to build that up in layers and let it dry between each layer. Otherwise, it'll, like I said, it'll start to run if I overdo it too quickly. Kind of like that. For some of the smaller weapon hilts, like their wraps of their grips, I'm going to use um, Gore Grunta fur. <laughs> I considered using Shaiish Purple Contrast Paint to do the trim around the scale mill, but decided not to because of the risk of the contrast paint running into these grooves between each scale. I found that I, I thought that was probably likely. So I'm using Xerius Purple and a small brush, and I just go through every single member of the of the warband and paint the trim around their scale mill with this stuff. Just one coat, you know, just making sure it's very neat. Just take your time uh, and don't rush because you want to avoid getting it on the green scales. Now coming back in with chain mail or runefang steel, 
I just thinned it down with a bit of water so that it flows nicely. And I'm just going to go through and highlight all of the uh, original Vallejo metallic paint steel that we did as a base for a lot of this armor. The helmets and belt buckles and areas like that. And just applying this to any of the raised surfaces, anything that's facing upwards, any sharp edges. When it came to the helmets, I would just drag the brush across the, uh, like they've got some engraved sections, just drag your brush across perpendicular to the engravings to, so that you don't catch, you know, you just catch the outside and you don't fill them in. To add a little more visual interest to the Mohawks, I took the Dark Angels Green Contrast Paint and for each one I'm making three, sometimes four depending on the size of it, three or four stripes, roughly equally distance. I'm not being super careful and counting every strand and whatnot. I'm just roughly eyeballing it to make them equidistant from each other. And then one trick is to make sure as you paint it, run it all the way around the sort of like the the top edge of the hair so that when you flip it over to paint the other side you can then kind of match up the strands on either side of their mohawk because you want it to be that if you're if you were to rotate the figure the strands look like they're darkened on both sides and that can be a little tricky to do if you just try to remember it as you paint the other side hopefully that explanation number 363 makes sense to you Scale 75 Peridot Alchemy has a nice greenish tone to it. It's kind of a green gold. And so I decided to use that on pretty much any remaining metal surfaces, to be honest. So that's like, you know, bracelets, head crests, or whatever they're called, helmet crests, um, the little dangly S symbols or snake symbols they've got, all, all, anything like that, little metal stingers. I went through and painted that all of those with this uh, Peridot Alchemy color, even some of the patterns like on these shields as you see here and on their belt buckles they have a little pattern or a little design, I painted those as well. This is an interesting color, it doesn't necessarily show up strongly against the silvery color but it overall I think it looks really good um, across the unit, I'm pretty happy with it. So. I did show in the, before at the start of this clip, it shows the Instar Water Plus. I use that to thin it eventually when it starts to get a little too thick. But at first it flows really nicely right out of the bottle and uh, I had shaken it a ton. So uh, I didn't thin it too much right away because the coverage wasn't necessarily amazing to begin with. So I didn't want to go too thin. I felt like I needed to shade that green, especially on the head crests or the helmet crests. I keep screwing that up. Anywhere that there was a little bit more texture. And I wasn't sure what I would use to, to shade it. So I, and I decided against using like a brown, a typical, oh geez, you're going to hear barking, typical gold shading. So I went with purple. Uh, sometimes I see people use purple to shade greens and I don't know what I'm doing. I, I thought it might look good. I think it's okay. It's probably not amazing. But I thinned the Juki, Juki Violet with 50% uh, Lamian Medium. And that flowed pretty well into the, you know, all the nooks and crannies without necessarily um, matting down the metallic too much. 
And actually, in the end, I do like how it looks. I just, I'm a little unsure about it, but I think it's working. I think it works, especially since there's purple used elsewhere on the models. For the True Blood's tail, I just used um, Dark Angel's contrast paint. It's nothing too crazy, and I didn't even record applying it. As with the previous warbands, there's this step where we go through, I use a mix of gray sear, because it's a base paint with good coverage, mixed with a white. In this case, I'm using P3 Moro White. But any white will do, really. And the whole idea here is we're creating a nice, even surface, uh, free of blotches and mistakes for the contrast paint we're going to use to do the flesh. And also, we're going to be painting those little vials of poison, so I wanted to clean those up as well at this stage. And I'm just taking it, the mix I just talked about, and applying it over any of these mistakes that I had made where I've gotten green or purple or brown, anywhere on the flesh that it's not supposed to be. Pretty straightforward. Uh, that We've done this for all three warbands, as I said. Use this as an opportunity to clean things up. And I find it's, instead of being tedious, it's kind of relaxing and, and re not rewarding. It sounds a little bit too new age, but it... it the figures, each one just starts to look better, right? Because you're cleaning up all these little mistakes and everything just starts to click into place. So each of these guys has a little vial of poison. So I'm going to use Minotaur Ghost Tint. This is the stuff I airbrushed onto the blades earlier. Uh, I'm just going to coat the entire vial with this. You could use a yellow ink as well, or, you know, to be honest, you could probably just use yellow paint. I'm probably just making this way more difficult than I need to. And when that's dry, or even if you're like me way before it's dry, um, I took contrast paint orc flesh, and I'm just going to brush it on so as not to completely cover the vial and leave a little bit of that yellow showing at the top. And so it's just going to get give this effect of it having like this greenish fluid in it and maybe that some of the green is leaving a yellowy tint on the top of the bottle. Very imperfect, sort of like I'm super screwing it up here, but really imperfect type of trick. But I think it'll look good enough. And, you know, it's looking terribly blotchy as I'm doing it here because I, w I didn't wait long enough for the tint to dry. And then what we can do is, I think I show it later, but we can come back and then do another coat after this is truly dry, a little bit lower and even covering less of the green so that you get this transition down to a dark green at the bottom. Just gives this idea of their, the impression of there being liquid in it. We come to it at last, the final step. I think there might be another one, but I want this to use dark oath flesh and have it be just a little darker than this. Um, I want these guys to have dark skin to contrast with that the light green scale mail and whatnot. So I'm going to do something. I don't know if any other painters have done this on YouTube. This could be a world first. I'm going to add a little bit of Vallejo Game Ink to the contrast paint. I'm adding two drops of Vallejo Game Ink Brown. Not too many because I don't really want to change the contrast paint's properties too much. In fact, I have no idea how this is going to work out. But I'm going to mix it up. I'm just going to apply it over all the... You know, it, it's really kind of the coolest step because for most of this time, we've been seeing their skin all white looking and it just, you know, the miniature just doesn't look right. But now this step's going to bring everything together and sort of finish off the miniature and you'll see the final result. Uh, it did go in a little bit streakier, but, or go on a bit streakier, but as long as you work quickly uh, and wick up any of the paint that starts to pool and wick it up, especially anywhere that it starts to pool or, or create blotches on raised surfaces like tops of knees or kneecaps, backs of heels, places like that. Anywhere that a blotch looks like it shouldn't be, you just wick it up with your brush. And then when you've finished applying it across all of these guys, you'll be just about done. So here's a look at one of them after the flesh has mostly dried. There's a little bit of shininess in the crook of his elbow there, but I'm pretty happy with this super fast. Oh yeah, it's just shiny armor. Super fast step and I think it looks good. And by the way, here's how I apply that. Like I said, the Orc Flesh contrast paint going back over another layer with covering slightly less of the green to create that dark effect at the bottom. Now I'll just go throw on some tufts. And here they are, the Splintered Fang, the third and final for now war band for Warcry. Very happy with how these turned out for the level of effort involved and Cutting lots of corners with contrast paints and inks and you name it.
if you'd like to support the channel, there's three ways you can do that. You can promote the video through liking and sharing. You can click on one of the Amazon links below before you buy from Amazon, which gets me a, a little affiliate cut and uh, doesn't cost you anything. And lastly, there's a tip jar link below for PayPal. Just uh, use that money to buy more paints and more figures. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and, and were able to tolerate the video weirdness and, and audio weirdness.